good afternoon everyone i am shashi bhushan mishra assistant professor in mechanical engineering department and startup coordinator for iic cell pr kote patil college of engineering and management we have gathered here all for train faculty development program on innovation and entrepreneurship competencies building which is being organized by pr kote patil college of engineering and management amravati and ensin forum entrepreneurship startup and innovation forum ensin forum we are glad here to have today with us mr deepan sau sir assistant innovation director innovation cell ministry of education and government of india as our chief guest so i welcome mr deepan sau sir welcome sir again we have with us mr sanjay jagtap sir chairman of ensin forum i welcome mr sanjay jagtap sir welcome sir we have today with us Dr. Rakhi Sharma, entrepreneurship educator and mentor, academic aid, Jain College. So I welcome her. Welcome, ma'am. Again, I welcome our honourable principal, Dr. D. T. Ingole sir, honourable vice principal, Dr. Muhammad Zuhair sir. I welcome all the head of the departments, the honourable deans, I C coordinator, Mr. Gore sir. I also welcome all the faculty members, research scholars, and aspiring entrepreneurs. from various institutes and enterprises and all my colleagues non teaching staff ladies and gentlemen so we have gathered here for the virtual inaugural of the train the trainers faculty development program on innovation and entrepreneurship competencies building with its session followed online and the session the complete fdp will be conducted offline later so now i request Professor Shailesh Thakre sir, to please introduce Mr. Sanjay Jagtap sir, Chairman of Ensin Forum. Please sir, Shailesh Thakre sir, please. Sir. Okay, good afternoon all. Am I audible sir? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes sir, uh, audible. Please continue. First of all, uh, I uh, welcome all of you. Uh, Uh, sanjay jagta I, i am going to in introduce uh, sanjay jagtap sir uh, sanjay uh, sir is uh, completed his msc in mathematics from iit madras uh, b electrical engineering from government college of engineering chandrapur uh, sir is currently working as an assistant professor in mathematics at uh, jspm imperial college of engineering and research pune sir has more than 10 years of teaching experience sir is experienced professional with a de uh, demonstrated history of working in higher education institutes sir is a chairman and director at entrepreneurship startup and innovation forum uh, sir is passionate to build a strengthen innovation and startup ecosystem promote entrepreneurial uh, your voice uh, breaking sorry sir i guess okay okay is it uh, clear now sir hello ha uh, it is okay now sir please continue okay uh, sir it is okay please continue entrepreneur cultural development in academia sir brings diverse stakeholders together from industry and academia to create a platform for the people who support and enable the startup ecosystem as entrepreneurial ecosystem enabler he uh, provides support to several institutes for developing entrepreneurial culture among uh, students and faculty uh, through various innovation practices and training programs workshop events conferences and webinars uh, now i uh, ask uh, sir to guide us uh, thank you sir on behalf of uh, ensin forum i welcome you all entrepreneurship startup and innovation forum the journey of this non profit section at company we start from april 2020 when the iic online sessions were started so we uh, the innovators ecosystem enablers and the professionals from industry and academia we uh, bring together and uh, started a collaborative platform that is to objective is to create a entrepreneurial ecosystem now the ias forum is now entrepreneurship startup and innovation forum ensin forum 
is a non-profit section 8 company established with the purpose of supporting and promoting entrepreneurship innovation and technology development and the creation of startups our aim is to create a vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem to nurture innovation and startups provide networking and collaborative platform among all the stakeholders and to help for the aspiring entrepreneurs for the creation of innovative startups that for the welfare of the society we are community of innovator ecosystem enablers startup mentors incubators and the professionals from industry and academia who are passionate about to strengthen the innovation and startup ecosystem at the academic institutions our focus is to fostering innovation and entrepreneurship among the stakeholders in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and mainly we focus for to identify nurture and support the budding entrepreneurs for the creation of startup by facilitating various support services uh, presently we are mentoring education and training providing support uh, virtual incubation programs we have a uh, experience advisory board members uh, since the ies from beginning to till they are guiders and with their guidance we are now as uh, registered it as a non profit section 8 company and definitely it will help us our uh, future progress ensin forum main objective is to set up a incubation center to create a vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem to carry out the uh, development of the research and innovation entrepreneurship and the creation of startups by providing services such as mentoring education and training incubation support services providing networking and linkages and access to the funding to provide and synergize among the academic community industrial establishments startup companies research and development institutions and all other stakeholders and the innovators group to function in collaborative mode to foster and accelerate the growth of innovation and entrepreneurship culture in academic institutions and the schools where we can provide all kind of support services to the incubation uh, centers edc startup and innovation sites to inculcate passion and spirit a product uh, project based learning among the students and the faculty develop their skills and uh, they should choose the entrepreneurship as a career option we provide for the early stage startups necessary guidance advisory and technical support and the incubation services so this with this brief uh, i will the main objectives and the ensin forum thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir that was the session of ensin forum that is entrepreneurship startup and innovation so we are holding this fdp in association with it. this is our first venture and we have already planned this fdp the first session being organized today so this session will be de uh, delivered by mr deepan sau sir the assistant innovation director ministry of education innovation sales aict so i would like to begin with the introduction of sir Shri Deepan Sau sir is a development professional so, with more than ten years of expertise in policy design and implementation in the areas of innovation and in higher educational institutions of India. He is currently assistant. I think. I think there is somebody of education. How is it? Requesting everybody to please mute yourself. He holds an undergraduate degree in fishery science from Sri Venkateshwara Veterinary University. He had completed his first master's degree in MBA in rural management from KIIT University. He has completed his second master's degree in development policy from Korea Development Institute, a South Korean government policy think tank. He is associated with AICT since 2017 and is a core member of the implementation team for national innovation and startup policy for higher educational institutions. He plays a lead role in designing and implementation of number of other major institutional policy initiatives such as Atal Ranking of Institutions of Innovation Achievement, Institutions Innovation Council, MBA in Innovation, 
entrepreneurship and venture development international acceleration program for early stage startup he manages a portfolio of various programs which are being implemented under ai city startup policy in academic institutions in ai city so we are fortunate enough that within a very short period of time shri deepan saul sir he accepted our request and agreed to be the guest of honor to be the chief guest and address this session one thing i would like to add on my side it is in nagpur in the regional meet we we are four professors from our institutions who had heard deepan saul sir there and we are really inspired by his words so now without wasting uh, wasting any further moment i request shri deepan saul sir to please guide us sir please sir yeah thank you so just correct me if my voice is going clearly or not somebody has to confirm it yes sir we are we can clear and yes is it clear okay okay so uh, i understand uh, this is your first venture to start with some fdv program and also i have gone through the uh, title and it is quite fascinating it is a train the trainer that means uh, your objective is now not to just orient the faculty members to, but to create a pool of trainers those are going to inspire and train other members so it is kind of a one step uh, uh, forward uh, i think uh, your forum is uh, uh, setting a target and it's a good initiative that's why i will first appreciate and congratulate uh, sanjay jagdeep and also the principal dr professor dt uh, anglesh ji and uh, rakhi sharma ji and all the members uh, those are coordinating and organizing this workshop and coming down to this fdp program it is on innovation entrepreneurship competencies building so it is again uh, you are focusing very narrowly but it is very very important aspect where actually majority of the faculty members are missing so or they are lacking so this part is a, again is a uh, uh, very good uh, uh, initiative and uh, intervention that you are planning uh, uh, and uh, also i think i have gone through the uh, the the whole module and uh, in that module it is addressing each and every aspect of an innovation and entrepreneurship development specifically this business model canvas and opportunity realization so it was properly planned so i will again uh, 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 congratulate sanjay jagdeep and his team that uh, you are working continuously and improving your uh, del your, your qu quality of services uh, and yes. trying to meet the expectation of the academia uh, and institutions uh, and trying to deliver the quality service so this is a kind of a good job you all are doing and keep continue please keep continue this kind of effort on regular basis so that uh, it not only it will motivate it will not inspire you all also it will inspire other institutions other faculty members uh, so that everybody will develop their orientations and positive connotations towards the innovation and entrepreneurship this is the what uh, our country is expecting from our educational institutions and especially the faculty members if i will highlight upon the what is the current strength of our uh, country especially the skilling is actually very very less so uh, as per a study international study the report says that uh, compared to the other developed developed countries in our country the skilling rate is uh, skilling rate uh, in graduate or post graduate students is around 4% that means those are graduating after the graduation hardly less than 4% or there are around 4% of graduate students they go for upgrading their skills be it a industry specific skill or any any kind of skill so this this is this very low level of skilling rate in our country it is very difficult to uh, leverage the opportunity of aiming for the advanced country uh, or a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025 or a advanced country by 2047 is not going to materialize because india is one of the youngest nation we have more than 60% of workforce are young uh, but if you will see about the skill level is actually it is completely disappointing and uh, now our education system is to be equally blamed also at the individual level so you are equally responsible that you are not aspire to become a big we are not not seeing a bigger picture rather than you we are restricting ourselves with a very kind of a uh, focused and narrow minded uh, career choice 
that is how also we have to blame ourselves that as an individual also we are responsible for that. But anyway, as for NEP 2020 now, it is everything changing. And since the Ministry of Education has started this innovation cell, also you are trying to bring uh, the changes in our educational institutions, especially in the students and faculty members. And uh, we are giving them a bigger picture to think big, to act big, and also uh, to come out from the comfort zone of only teaching and learning, but to learn so many other new skills, new areas, new disciplines, new domains, and acquire uh, the new skills uh, and knowledge so that they will perform not only as a teacher or they, they will also perform a hybrid role of mentor, innovator, startup founder, and also they can act as an enabler of something kind of things. That's why this we are doing since uh, last three and a half years. And in the last three and a half years, if you will, the number of institutional innovation councils we have established, it, it was started with 400. And today, if you will go and check the number of IACs established, it has crossed more than 5,500. That means uh, the number of IACs is now increasing every day, in every month and every year. So this is a very good sign. But if I will say how many IACs today is around 5,500, but how many higher education institutions we have is around uh, 60,000. So out of 60,000 institutions, only 5,500 institutions have Institutional Innovation Council. So if you will see this gap, it is again uh, uh, too huge, too large. Uh, but in 2017, it was only 400. There is no such kind of councils. But if you will see from that journey, it is encouraging. But if you compare with the total population of the higher education institution, then I think still there is a long way to go. And there are so many things to make. And completely the area is... Uh, uh, open for each and everybody to come and play and uh, contribute to towards this development so this is the one thing actually i have to highlight and the second thing i am to highlight, i'm going to highlight is the innovation ambassadors so while developing this innovation councils actually we need the faculty members the student members to come forward and to drive this ecosystem but if you will see the kind of experience kind of uh, 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 educational qualification actually it is not aligned with the innovation and entrepreneurship requirement. That's why more than 98% of faculty members, those are deployed in these educational institutions, they are only good with the technology development or R&D or publications or teaching and learning, but they are not getting into the uh, zone of mentoring, this innovation, commercialization of intellectual properties, technology transfer, industry consultancy, then uh, uh, innovation development, uh, then for the startup or venture creation. That part is completely devoiding. So, uh, but we can't build, we can't imagine, we can't dream for a, uh, a vibrant and dynamic startup ecosystem in these educational institutions by excluding these faculty members. That's why we have started this innovation numbers training program because we have to gradually and on a phase by phase manner, we have to also start upgrading their mindset, their orientation, their awareness level, their skill set, and their involvement, and their practice in innovation and entrepreneurship domain. That's why this innovation ambassador training program, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are converting after a basic level of training, after the advanced level of training, uh, they are now getting engaged into innovation and entrepreneurship uh, promotion and support related activities. And they're also helping in driving the campus innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem and IIC activities in the campuses. And they are acting as a mentor, verifier, and so many multiple roles they are performing. So this is a very good sign that at present, more than 20,000 faculty members of these IICs, they have received the first level training. And uh, we have created aspiration in their mind that uh, post-training, they have to perform certain volunteer activities as an expert as an expert rather than as a coordinator. No doubt they are playing the role of coordinator, but we, we want to see them as an expert to delivering the expert talks and uh, influencing and motivating the other uh, uh, people like uh, student and faculty members from their own institute, from outside the institute, from, uh, from schools, from community. So they have a different variety of roles they can play as an expert rather than as coordinator. They're, they're in the, as a coordinator, they're already good. They're doing so many coordination activities. So that is a, one step, again, uh, escalating their uh, role and uh, uh, contribution to the society and to the institute. Uh, that as for the topic uh, uh, you are highlighting upon, and I am also a great supporter of, and of this uh, competency development uh, title, because I believe for each and every individual has three things, three things they have to focus more on. The first is the attitude. 
or the the the, the, the attitude and the behavior level so every individual be it a faculty or a student or is a ordinary uh, um, uh, the person in our country every person should have the attitude and positive attitude towards innovation and entrepreneurship this attitude development is first development we should accept the innovation we should accept that innovation and entrepreneurship is the core of the strategy or core of their action or core of their uh, implementation so developing the positive attitude is first and but that attitude will come with awareness with the information if you have no seamless flow of the information and if you will not create the awareness in this attitude will not develop this attitude will be limited so to have this attitude positive attitude there should be a flow of information and awareness level once the person is well is equipped with well attitude then the next thing they have to focus is on ability that is called skill or the training through training they have to develop the ability to uh, and when i say attitude and one of the indicator of attitude is called opportunity seeking that means problem solving problem solving and opportunity seeking are the attitude it is indication of the good attitude and once you have the problem seeking mentality and sorry problem solving mentality and opportunity seeking mentality then it has to be reflect in the work that's we call ability and the ability is called skill or the kind of knowledge you have you have acquired through training or through participation in many activities or the programs or through experiential learning now you have to convert this opportunity seeking to opportunity realization that means the opportunity you have identified you have to convert into a thing something like a uh, uh, to realize it so this ability is ability is the skill set and knowledge of an individual to convert the opportunity seeking to opportunity realization and through this process the third component is called aspiration aspiration means individual can visualize a bigger picture what they are doing now where they stand now and through which path they will they will reach to a bigger goal or they can see a bigger target or be a kind of a vision that they want to achieve in the next 5 or 10 years down the line so this aspiration creation of aspiration in the every individual's mind is also very very essential that means when we are seeing the competencies it it focus on three level attitude level ability level and also the uh, aspiration level that means we have to design our curriculum we have to design our programs in such way that it will influence into will trigger at each and every these three level of the individual now comes to the uh, now what kind of competencies if i will say competencies then opportunity realization is definitely opportunity seeking and opportunity is definitely one type of competencies everybody should know it and they should know the design thinking principle they should know the problem solving approaches how to identify the problem how to uh, develop the solution through a team work and how to apply the design thinking principle to Hello, uh, sorry to interrupt i'm not able to hear you sir are others able to hear yes yes uh, we are able to hear uh, uh, deepan sir uh, he is quite uh, clear yes, in this very comfortable yeah okay sir continue okay so one is called the one of the competencies definitely the problem solving and opportunity seeking and kind of things the next competencies they should acquire and they should make sure that they have this ability is called risk management or uncertainty management because entrepreneur journey is never is just a comfort comfort uh, assignment and they have to deal with so many uncertainties they have to deal with so many risks so managing the risk and managing the uncertainties through information through logical way is also another competence they should focus on and the third focus of the third thrust part of first area of the competencies is called leadership or the team building you can't do alone so you have to make a team or you have to build a like minded person or with different skill set and different the kind of a mental uh, different uh, uh, complementary skills or supplementary skills so that you will accomplish the assignment so team building leadership capability or the leadership ability is also one of the competencies that uh, uh, that is required and the fourth one what i believe is called resource management like you have to manage you have you should have the ability to identify the resources exist in somewhere and anywhere and the resources are remaining ideal how you are going to utilize this ideal resources or existing resources so that you will mobilize these resources be it a financial be it a human resources be it a technical resources be it any kind of resources be it environmental resources and how you are going to utilize it and you have to you have the you have the capacity to devise a scalable 
and sustainable model because if you will only just able to create something which is just for a short lasting then i think there is no use so what are the solution or what are the model or what are the interventions you are going to plan that should be a sustainable or that should be a scalable one so this components if you will make sure then definitely i think you will prepare a holistic and inclusive development not only within you also you will also in, uh, create a uh, similar kind of environment uh, where you live in and also you can influence others to follow the same path and uh, ultimately you will set yourself as a role model for each and every one so that is the whole the things in a very very not cell so thank you for uh, for giving me the opportunity i think uh, in the very this short time whatever the things i can that i have delivered Hello. Very nice of you, sir. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Hi. Ah, yes. yes. Sir, uh, good afternoon, dignitaries. Uh, myself, I'm Meshwar, a convener of this IIC. Sir, we have just established our IIC in the month of what April, and uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, we have almost all every tab in that IIC portal. So, related to that, uh, one query is regarding that IIC portal. So, what should be the role of IIC in Atal School linkage? That is my question to you, sir, Deepan, sir. Okay, I think this is not the right forum, but anyway, I will answer it in a very short. Uh, actually, uh, uh, now when you set up this IIC in the higher education institutions, no doubt you are trying your best to create the ecosystem in your institute. But higher education institution also has the responsibility to establish a good connection and establish a bridge. With the school education, so there is a continuity of that development, right? That's why uh, we have started this school innovation council and after tinkering lab uh, establishment in uh, school level. And uh, IACs are now now have to play the role of mentor role uh, to uh, identify at least three school innovation council or the three ATL labs, and they have to provide mentoring supports to this ATL or SICs. So uh, we have just done the matching part, and from this IAC 5.0 part. the mentoring activities like mentor mentee in iic we have also created a mentor mentee portal for iic and atl and uh, through that guided activities they have to perform certain things and the ministry of education and atal innovation mission of uh, niti aayog we, uh, we are collaborating and we are trying to make sure that school and higher education system go together and in parallel so that there will be a continuity of the education and behavioral and aspirational development also ability that what are the holistic development of innovation entrepreneurship can be achieved so that is the what the purpose of linking us iics with atls okay sir thank you sir uh, sir, uh, sir i am nilesh hopre uh, from uh, yukti portal i want to ask one question sir so i think it's it's uh, you are asking beyond the question <laughs> So I think I I I will not the opportunity to talk with you. So I think that you no, know, I think I think Surender Surender is your journal in charge, WR Zone, and he is very proactive yeah, yeah, in answering questions. Fine, fine. So please, please, yeah. uh, please call yeah. him. Please call. Sure, please sure. bother him. Sure, sure. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I will call to the Surender, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. Hello. Uh, I have one question on my side. Hello, sir. uh it is something that uh, as per our understanding means the general understanding that curiosity then creativity and risk taking these are some of the uh, competencies in innovation so how do we associate risk taking and how do you minimize it so what we can say about it please see uh, i don't know that uh, i have already taken so many sessions on how to manage the risk because actually see there are two things let let's understand in a very simpler way uh now there are two type of risk right risk is one is risk aversiveness one is necessary risk aversiveness and another is called risk taking right so those persons take risk is called risk taking those person avoid risk is called risk aversive okay so risk aversive is actually because you have no you have no information either you are fear of the taking risk or you are in a very comfort zone or you have no ability to do it that's why you are avoiding that's why called risk aversiveness coming to the risk taking actually again uh, there is a sub type of risk taking one is called gambler those take risk without understanding the whole situation they just directly jump into the sea and after that they are not very sure that they will they will die or they will uh, live and uh, they just put all resources without understanding where to go what to go they have not much clear their goal and uh, the strategy they have no information that is called gambler so risk taking with gambling attitude it should be avoided 
next is called risk taking where is called with logic with research with information with expert advice with your own homework you have to take the risk so it is the principle says that when you take risk with lots of information with back information with research with second with the expert talk and with validation your risk uncertainty part get reduced and now when unknown risk convert into known risk then there is a risk is managed that's why your everybody's attitude and approach should be converting unknown to the known one so once you will convert unknown to known one that means you will be better in a position to manage the risk that is the what the principle i am saying yeah thank you sir thank you very much that was really very good explanation because that means you have to be prepared first you have to uh, make sure you have done a lot of study research and then you are diving into something so that is how you can associate with it thank you sir thank you again if anyone is having any questions you can please ask because he is there with us he is definitely there to answer us so many things you can easily get the answers from him if anyone is having any questions please Okay, Mr. Uh, Ji, we will continue our chat share box. Chat box also they can share, and at the end of this program, we will share that question to respected Dipanji. That will be fine. Okay. Thank okay, you. sir. Thank you. So, on behalf of the PR Porte Engineering College, as a principal, once again, I thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you, Pan sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for guiding us with your inspiriting words, and thank you for your query solving sessions where so many things they are being cleared to us. Because we have also a hard user in the IRC Regional Meet at Nagpur in Raisan University. We four professors there, so there we have also hard you. So that really inspired us, and coming back we have made a report, a brief report on it. A study that how and what needs to be exactly implemented. So that was really again uh, very fortunate and glad to have you here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for this extremely practical and really helpful guidance on innovation, entrepreneurship, all the things. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Deepan sir, just quick thirty seconds. I just want to uh, say one thing. Uh, I, I mean, you spoke about design thinking, problem solving, risk management, uncertainties, and competencies. and leadership so one of the thing which we look at as a gap because uh, since 2007 i'm working in the field of entrepreneurship the first person who can bring a change at the grassroots level is the teacher and which is precisely a reason when we thought of this we said train the trainers because whatever everything is done but if we have to bring a change the teachers can bring a change so the purpose of this workshop is that every attendee who will be attending this workshop should get, have an outcome of an entrepreneurial thinking because if they believe and they can have that kind of change in perspective they'll be able to do that yes so you are really right you are right appreciate uh, sir all your uh, uh, things and uh, and uh, another thing is on a saturday uh, you are you are you are accepted this invite uh, we really uh, really appreciate your uh, commitment towards entrepreneurship thank you sir thank you thank you thank you okay so that is a very wonderful excellent session by deepan sau sir now to continue the pro uh, program further i'd request our honorable principal Dr. D. T. Ingole, sir, to please guide us, please, sir. So we are eagerly waiting after Deepan Sau, Dr. Rakheshji also. So I will not talk much about this one. So already we are in a process of completing the MOU with a very dynamic uh, forum, NC. So after completion of that MOU, we will having. the lot of similar type of the programs and uh, i hope that yeah i hope that uh, the porte engineering college and the nc will definitely groom the various activities so now we are very eager to listen the lot of things from the dr rakhi also 
So I request, uh, I, I first of all, thankful to uh, Professor Sanjay, Dr. Raki, Dr. I mean, Professor Sopan also, who uh, has taken a lot of efforts to bring this forum, leverage this forum, as well as to consider our request for the MOE also. So I take this opportunity to thank you and uh, I request uh, Dr. Raki to proceed and guide us regarding the basic uh, aspect of uh, the today's webinar. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ingle, sir. Uh, we really appreciate your advice, your guidance and uh, uh, and your association and uh, mentoring when we look at these kind of an activities. Uh, uh, in absentia, we really I want to thank uh, uh, Deepan sir also who has brought in a lot of perspectives. Uh, so just quickly reviewing what are we talking about when we start when we say uh, this uh, uh, FDP. So uh, there was a lot of thought process which is put in uh, between I mean yeah, the principal sir and uh, the ensign forum in ensuring that we bring grassroots level changes and which is why it is the name also has been designed as train the trainers program so uh, so the purpose here is ki every faculty who attend should have a change in in a thinking perspective so it is a two way communication so it is no more uh, the entire fdp is planned in such a way so that uh, it is more of a two way communication which means we will immerse faculty into a kind of an entrepreneurial environment. Huh? So they will go through the things which we expect our students to go through when uh, we want them to have an entrepreneurial journey or, uh, or uh, learn how to do it. So that's how the entire FDP has been planned. Uh, the, the, the few of things which, uh, which we talk about, the first part we will start with, uh, uh, with on why entrepreneurship education. So when we say, Lot many times we always talk about entrepreneurship is required for the country, for the world, for everybody. So that is one part definitely we are going to talk about. But there's another element which is very important is what is in it for you. That means we are talking about what is in it for the academic faculty, right? What is in it for it? So it's like, you know, everybody needs a purpose. It is not only because of an educational institute we are doing this. We are also doing it for our personal growth. So here we are going to bring in some of these cases of the faculties who have been successful and are doing very well because they they chose a path of entrepreneurship education so again that's one part of the of the fdp where we talk about because if we give a purpose to all of us i mean that is very very important uh, so a benefit to all these stakeholders of course student is an important stakeholder institute is an important stakeholder or uh, our government is an important stakeholder even our faculty is also an important stakeholder so the faculty also will get a purpose out here in terms of their personal growth else also the entire FDP has been designed keeping in mind experiential learning. So sometimes there we talk about lecture and uh, we are so glad uh, that the uh, that um, English sir was very keen that we want this uh, FDP to be in an offline mode because the real impact is very, very important. So that was something which was uh, very thought about there. Uh, so the purpose here is experiential learning and we are focusing more on an outcome. So anybody who attends should take away some kind of a thing. So that's where so we are going to use a COBE's uh, experiential learning model so that we can actually train our faculty. And when these faculties go in the respective classes or do a session, they also can replicate the same thing. So whatever will be done in the FDP, you can exactly simulate in your respective classroom. And that's the purpose of it. So we talk about experiential learning and uh, what should it be applied in? How should you can apply it even when you're teaching uh, uh, anything which is related to entrepreneurship or otherwise? Uh, there's another part in the FDP we are going to talk about is, of course, there are certain assumptions we always make. Myth hum amesha banate hai, ki we always talk about uh, certain things that only if the funding is available, that and I can have in startups. So those kind of myths also will be discussed in this FDP. And and of course, uh, what are the different startup success stories from different institutes also? So this is the first part when we talk about in terms of uh, the setting the foundation. The second part of the FDP which we'll have is is your self discovery. So uh, Deepan sir spoke about the team part. He spoke about a lot of things. So here 
we are going to run a, a kind of a personality test out there where all of us will all of the faculty all the attendees will be able to identify their own leadership style the kind of skills and competencies because the the, the title of the forum uh, of the fdp is about building competency so i need to understand what is my competency what is uh, somebody else's competencies and how we can complement each other so that was the second part of it where we talk about uh, the self discovery uh, also important thing is here we also want to uh, to ensure and build competencies of our faculty in developing network right uh, identifying their own style and how to form a a team so that is something because that is very very important lot a lot many times students come and ask like you know how should i make my team and majority of the startups fail or maybe can't grow to from an early stage to a little later stage is because there is a problem with the team structure so there is something so we are going to immerse our faculty into the kind of a, a simulation where they can actually go through that so that's the second part where we talk about self discovery understanding yourself Uh, one of the objective here is we talk about understanding everybody but here we want you to understand yourself uh, then we move to the next part is idea generation again uh, it's a uh, lot of people come with lot of ideas so again we are going to uh, go through a uh, an activity where uh, you the faculties will generate an idea and subsequently it's not only just idea generation identifying which idea they can actually go ahead and and use that so there are certain kind of tools which will be to taught which subsequently they can replicate in their own classes or even they can actually help help startups to to see if i'm not going ahead with a particular idea what are the reason is it the investment required is marketability is it what is the reason is it technology support what is the reason why a particular idea is not uh, taken care of so lot of research part how to go ahead with this kind of a research how to apply 5q framework which will actually help me to uh, to work out and fix up certain uh, uh, things so that is what uh, we talk about here once the faculty will zero down on an idea which they want to grow uh, so one is they are going to work in groups uh, then we'll take them to a business model canvas so again uh, as uh, what uh, what is very important is what is the problem you're trying to solve how are you solving the problem so there is a model business model canvas which they will be taught how to make it it's a basically a blueprint and when we use one term for business model canvas is how can you make money in today's environment so that is the purpose of business model canvas so it is very important because if you can show somebody money in a venture in terms of sustainability that is where the person gets interested so we are going to help faculties and train how to make their business model canvas for the idea which they want to go ahead with and the, they'll make their business model canvas and subsequently there is a presentation teach back we call it as teach back so that is something so the faculty in their respective groups will come and teach or maybe talk about their business model canvas so that is where they're linking the problems they're linking the entire thought process and that is what they will go through so uh, the purpose of uh, purpose of this uh, presentation is basically for them also to understand how the what students go through when they are actually doing a presentation or what's happening out there so that is one which is very very important uh, so that's why we because sometimes it happens when and that's what we have noticed that lot of i mean generally also we all attend sessions and we go out but then after that we don't know how to implement it so that is one of the part which we intend to do here uh the next one is uh, uh is is like you know and um, and uh, deepan sir also suggested is design thinking is so again what are the specific problems which are solved so we already have design thinking for customer delight i mean somebody who is going to give us money who would like to buy a product or a service am i actually solving a problem how my project is user centric and all of us must have experienced that there are so many people who are in love with their own idea and project and they end up spending lot of time we want here for them to understand and, and apply design thinking principles which are empathy mapping can i actually empathize with the user can i actually empathize with somebody who is willing to pay me right people are our people appreciate product but they don't buy so i need to understand from a user perspective so that is where we will uh, we will uh, uh, train faculty to apply the design thinking principles for the idea for which they have created their business model canvas so they'll create the empathy map the customer or the user what they see feel talk if it are if you're talking about a high tech product where we are already investing so much time so much research lab work and everything who will be the person who is willing to pay 
what is the job am i trying to do for the person how much is the pricing so that those are the kind of principles which will be applied so that before you are ready with your prototype or a minimum viable product you are uh, sure about why am i doing it and this will be done with an activity or also there's initial activity which will be uh, conducted so that they understand that all of us at some point of time i mean we all take risk uh, and less risk is something like you know uh, it's 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 inevitable i mean so it is important for us to know the uncertainties there is a lot of uncertainties we can't get out of it we can't overcome i mean we can't just say there's a risk so we can't do that it is important to know the risk and how to mitigate it is something which is a competency so i it is important for me to know 10 reasons why my business or a project will not do well the purpose here is what skills i need to develop so that i can mitigate those risks so today we talk about it's not only financial risk it is it is talent risk it is so many other risk risk which is there so we talk about enterprise risk management so this is one area where we are uh, going to uh, have one session on this which will be again the faculties the kind of risk which is associated and another part is how are we helping our students to learn from their failures so it's not that even today we talk about google google is plan b plan a google ka kuch aur tha and nobody knows about it but agar wo plan a nahi hota to plan b nahi aata so that's a purpose out here is we as a faculty coordinators as faculty and the directly who are interacting with the students it is important for us to actually see what is happening they may fail we have to help them in develop developing that resilience attitude and which is very important huh? so that is something which is which is what we are going to do one session on in on mitigating risk and uh, and that is also with an activity so again what is an affordable loss how risk and resilience should be dealt with it is it is okay to fail it is absolutely fine to fail it is and it is better to fail in college so have your startup in college and change the entire timeline because the entire institute the ecosystem is actually helping you to support and so that you can actually learn from the failure so that's the basic purpose and we want to celebrate failures it's fine so that is one of the changing perspective we want to have as a part of the fdp program and that is where we are uh, we are so the purpose as i again going back to the main point the purpose of this fdp is all the attendees should have an entrepreneurial thinking so after the session after the fdp any problem they come across any time they do it they have to have that entrepreneurial thinking and perspective that's a whole core of uh, doing a uh, uh, this fdp so that these trainers when they meet their students they meet the startups they meet uh, uh, their people they can actually pass on to the respective students and create that ecosystem so that is um, um overall uh, an overview of the entire fdp i again uh, want to reiterate on this point that the entire fdp is in a form of simulation it is not a lecture somebody is speaking and there's others who attend and there is a folder which is made and the folder goes in some place and nobody knows what happens and the nice certificate we all hold and carry it is also about everything what is taught immediately the faculty has to work on it and do a presentation or 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 be a part of it that that's how the entire fdp is designed completely on experiential learning so that's it from uh, my side uh, so uh, thank you english sir for allowing me thank to you. give an overview thank you very much uh, i think for the development of uh, this fdp further so i recommend that we should have a committee sort of thing Uh, professor sanjay is there yeah he is there yeah so i recommend that we should have a, a joint committee where we can develop this if you if you have that content ready made then i don't mind otherwise uh, what exactly train the trainer as uh, this is the main motto of this so that uh, through that joint committee we can develop the content the right content of that and we'll uh, go according to according to that content so that uh, or uh, this explanation will be the to the point and uh, we can have the schedule also according to that that is my submission
yes sir i mean i completely agree with you what you are saying is because uh, so content is something of course uh, uh, we have a content ready but uh, we will be happy to have uh, a uh, committee or the people from your end uh, who would be happy to like you know can also help us out in some some sort of additional thing which can be uh, developed and uh, which can uh, run and run with the respective uh, uh, faculty and keep understanding the approach of the faculty also and uh, there is one more thing which is in pipeline our institute institution is going to organize this uh, startup uh, business project competition so basis on our the project which our final year students are submitting and before that uh, we'll have one conference which is uh, the purpose is to paper i mean present the paper competition which is also the based on the project which they are developed so in the coming days in the november or so we'll have one conference and in that uh, case also i'd like to again associate this activity with the our forum once again nc because uh, as you rightly said that that, that is also the part of our ecosystem so such activity we have to conduct so the paper presentation is the one thing and immediately after that uh, probably in the month of uh, january we'll have a project competition uh, that is what i propose Yes, uh, sure. I mean, uh, uh, note it down. We've noted down all, uh, and then probably off the uh, thing, we can you know, get in touch with the committee who you appoint, so that we can take these things ahead. Huh? Uh, Professor Nanda is there. Anybody from Teklon? Anybody from Teklon? Okay, uh, Dr. Raki from again another another submission from my side yes, that uh, this is the one of the biggest activity of our institution name as a tech law. The name itself that this is the technical activity where the paper presentation and uh, various project competition will conduct. Uh, PR Porte is the group of the institutions. Uh, other than the engineering, uh, we have the agriculture here. We have the pharmacy. Then we have the medical institution. Then we have the architecture is also there. I mean, such type of the different institution. So we'll have this uh, competition uh, with the various domains like this, including various domain like this. So for this take along, we propose uh, some of the activity which are very concerned with our this innovation and entrepreneurship activity. Like a startup and so on, so forth. So in that case also, I would like to request uh, your forum to guide us regarding the selection of certain big celebrities, uh, so that we can invite them during that take along period. We can guide. I mean, we may through yourself only. We will again invite uh, Professor Deepanji also for certain session, so and so forth. So. I'd like to request through this today, today's webinar, that please guide us regarding that also in coming days. Definitely, sir. So, okay, Mr. Ji, if there is any schedule, as per schedule, okay, sir. is there anything pending? Otherwise, okay, so I'll... thank you. Dr. Raki Sharma, ma'am, for our valuable guidance. We would like to inform all the faculty members that we uh, are organizing an FDP, and the FDP is the trainers. Trainers. The special session that today we have it was uh, on the competencies building, entrepreneurship and innovation competencies building. The FDP will be in a physical mode, and that will be conducted, and it will all will be informed about it. today it was also the inaugural of that fdp session so it was all a wonderful session again in the presence of sri deepan sau sir so to continue further i'd request sanjay jagtap sir to please present or uh, to please ask sopan sir to please present the vote of thanks on my side i am very much thankful to today's absentia dr deepan sau sir 
मिस्टर संजय जगताप सर डॉक्टर राकी शर्मा मैम और ऑनरेबल प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर डी टी इंगोले सर ऑल द रिस्पेक्टेड डीन हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट फैकल्टी मेंबर्स रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स फ्रॉम अदर इंस्टीट्यूट एंड आई एम स्पेशली थैंकफुल टूर डायनेमिक लीडरशिप ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन श्री प्रवीण पोटे सर एंड वाइस चेयरमैन श्री शेष पोटे सर एंड विद दिस नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट संजय सर टू प्लीज कंटिन्यू फर्दर प्लीज सर Sanjay sir, your mic is muted. I guess we are not able to hear you. You have to unmute your mic, please. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, it is. Thank. On behalf of Ensign Forum, uh, in absence of uh, our team member, uh, Mr. Sopanaga, uh, it's an opportunity to give a vote of thanks that today's uh, virtual inauguration of FDP. Uh, from the beginning the institute the management the principal and the faculty coordinator professor uh, shashivishan mishra sir and the team that the we get a support for organizing this uh, virtual inauguration program of the faculty development program so we thanks uh, today's uh, guest mr deepan sau sir uh, given us uh, insights of this aptitude train the trainers program and definitely it will help us in uh, proceeding this fdp onwards uh, dr rakesh sharma madam uh, highlighted about the various uh, sessions we are conducting in offline mode at institute in amravati so we expecting for the offline mode the faculty uh, from the nearby regions in amravati university will uh, participate and uh, very much thanks to all the participants today which are present here and on behalf of ensin forum i especially thanks to the faculty those they are with us uh, from the beginning uh, as a part of the uh, is group innovators entrepreneurs and the startup community professionals from academia in uh, innovation uh, academia that are supporting us from the beginning and they are present here for the fdp and thank you all the today present faculty and the, the students which are present here thank you all from the institute and the ancient forum thank you uh, sanjeev ji thank you. sir one yeah. just yes, one more yes. i think 30 more seconds again uh, uh, it is uh, i really want to thank english uh, uh, sir and i really appreciate the efforts of uh, uh, the principal because if you have a such a dynamic principal i mean all the faculties are blessed because when it comes from the principal and this is the kind of a training and building competencies trust me it really really transforms a faculty so on on the record i really really thank english sir that you you are actually building a kind of a competencies for your faculty and uh, uh, thank you for providing us this kind of a platform sir uh, uh, so thanks once again and thanks all the faculty and mishra sir for coordinating the full program Uh, so that it went on uh, in so on a smooth uh, uh, direction so thank you very much thank you thank you sanjeev ji thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. so now we have already discussed a lot of things and as our session has been inaugurated and the very first session i could say that it was uh, to a major extent a very successful session in the presence of highly esteemed personalities and now with the permission of chair i hereby declare that this today's particular program is over thank you all thank you very much thank you. thank you very much bye bye thank you thank you thank you thank you sanjeev thank you ma'am yes sir